So a few weeks back, a client reached out to me for help on this WD Black SN850. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of a strange coincidence because on the day that I received that request, uh, my SSD failed. It just uh, stopped working out of the bloom. I opened up the lid. I bought two extra SSDs for my uh, Lenovo. And uh, one of them that failed, I looked at the label and it was also a WD Black SN850. Mine was two terabyte version. The one that I received for data recovery from this client is one terabyte. Let's dive into this, find out what it needs and whether or not we can do something to help this client. Uh, this is a WD SN850. This device had been sent somewhere else before. Client could not get the data back. Uh, they reached out to me asking if I can help. The unit came in, it had the label already peeled. So looks like somebody might've just been probing some components. I didn't notice any solder work. Response on PC3000, even though I could show it to you right now, it's, it's something that we will do later in this video, was not getting us anywhere. It would get stuck on busy state and would not progress further. The very first step to recovering any device should be a, a very detailed inspection of surface mount components, broken, burnt, corroded, that kind of stuff. So uh, during that inspection, which I was already performing, I noticed on this corner right here, something was quite strange to me. I don't know if you can see that, but I can, I can definitely say that this tip of the board is slightly crooked here. I started looking closer and I noticed uh, there is this cut on this side, which is probably not critical because we've got a big, big, big uh, ground plane running on the backside, which cutting is not going to really do anything to. But the fact that it's bent like that, the fact that it's not straight anymore, internal layers, if there are layers, and there probably are with the board this thick and, you know, this complex, uh, internal layers may have a fracture. So two things could be done in this case. Uh, we could grab a grinder and we could start slicing and dicing this thing apart. One thin layer at a time, or we could um, take an x-ray, which I did. I wanted to make it a part of the video and I hopped in the car and I drove out to this place that does uh, x-ray images for us. And uh, unfortunately, the guy, I don't know what his deal was, but he was super against me filming anything. So this right here, what you see, this is the resistor. It's this resistor right here. So if we make a cut here, we're gonna still have continuity between this end and this end, even if we don't bridge it. So we can safely cut it. And to cut it, we've got a tool like this. Okay, this is just to park the component for now. I'm not gonna be keeping it there. And uh, the key here is just to go very gently on it. These dots here, they unite layers together. So we have a plane here that through via is connected to the plane on, on the layer below. These two, we should hear a constant beep. And we do. So yeah, that's the same plane. Yeah, this I would be worried about cutting into this with um, with the grinding pan. Yeah, this should give you a really clean view of what we got down to. Mm. 
Yeah, that will do it. Whenever we take a red probe, stick it on the ground, everything that's connected in the circuit has to ring out once. That shows that the, there's connection. All of these signals are ringing. Except for this one. And this one is the closest. I want to see where this trace leads us. One hour later. Yeah, I did damage it. It's easy fix. And what we got here is enough for tests. So, so what we're going to do to restore this pad is go from here to anywhere here. That should be good enough. Same goes for, for this signal. We've got connection on here. But not connection here. So we've got to link it. The wire that's going up to the last one, right? It's the closest to the fracture. There seems to be no damages there. We have continuity between this point here, right? And this point here, it's connected. The wire is connected. Now we have this hole indicating that it's going all the way through Let's notch this right here, all the way through to here, to this via, right here. And we have connection here. Maybe, guys, we just found... another clue. I'm not gonna jump a gun and say we found a solution, but maybe just another clue. Now what is the clue? Now this via, like I said, it connects multiple layers, right? And you guys remember how many layers we went through? One, two, three, four, five. All of these are connected. And connection between this part, there's something we can test actually. If I got a red probe on the ground, and when I poke this pad there, it produces a short beep. And it does. We had a disconnected uh, wire through the via. Somewhere in the inside of the via, we have, a, we have a break. Maybe that was the reason why it's not working. So when we link it back now between the two layers, we should join them together. And then we're going to ring get a ringing on that line that we don't get a reading currently. I just want to secure this wire a little better. It's kind of important. Remember how we tested that wire and it didn't ring at all. So here I am setting the red probe on the ground. And I'm finding my trace that was not linking back. just to make sure we're getting these single beeps on all of the lines connected. Once all the wires confirmed uh, for connection, I applied some uh, mask to secure them and cure them so that those wires won't break off by accident and I powered up a uh, PC3000. Now, I was really, really hopeful that this is gonna work. I spent a lot of time working this case. The entire day went into this actually, including the time uh, it took to get an X-ray done, driving out there, then grinding this thing up and soldering it up just to see the same behavior. 
Yeah, so unfortunately, uh, this case did not work out. You can't win them all, as they say, but I was really hopeful that once uh, we find out what's broken on the inside, we can patch it up and the unit will just magically uh, work. Maybe it's just uh, me being super optimistic. We don't know uh, what state it was in before or after it failed, whether this fracture has anything to do with the initial cause of the damage at all. Uh, so many ifs leave us guessing at many things what could potentially gone wrong. But what I could do in order to help this device, I've done. My conscience is clear and uh, sadly the data is not coming back, at least for now, until uh, this type of controller is supported with PC3000 and then we would be able to maybe uh, get some extra work done to see if it's running. My suggestion to uh, owners of devices that are not supported right now is to just uh, powering on your flash memory devices every two three weeks or so just to keep them charged because just like batteries they may die and never come back again if they uh, stay off power for way too long they're going to be developing a lot of bad sectors and that's not going to help the cause of data recovery so thank you guys for watching uh, don't forget to hit like comment and uh, share this video uh, also don't forget to subscribe if you're new here it's totally free i don't charge anything for a subscription so uh, i'm happy to see you here hopefully you enjoyed this video and i'll see you all in the next one